Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And I kind of want to add some context to the title before we start this video. Obviously, I've been using the cloud and specifically AWS for about five to six years now. So I'm going to have a lot of uh, base knowledge that I'm not going to be able to let on in this video. Um, and also, there was a lot of hard work on the back end for me to pass this, this test or this certification in the actual three days that I did. But with that being said, my background is I'm a security engineer now, and I've been a software engineer in the past, and I've, I've always delved into cloud infrastructure and had to provision it um, through my various uh, startup jobs that I've had. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you guys how I passed my AWS Cloud Practitioner certification only after three days of studying. <laughs> So I have to admit, even though I've been using and creating solutions in the cloud for the past five years, I was really nervous to take this exam. It's been a long time since I've actually been in a proctored examination environment um, with a standardized test such as this. And it's really heavily proctored, like they monitor you really, really well. So for example, you'd have to actually turn off two of the monitors that you see behind me so you'd only have one monitor in play. You have to take your webcam that you see behind me, you have to show it all over your desk to make sure you don't have any notes, you don't have a laptop, you don't have a phone. And it, it kind of makes me, it made me a little nervous, you know? So if you guys are feeling nervous before you take, take this exam, it's perfectly normal. Now with that being said, I used four main resources to get the breadth of the knowledge that I needed in order to pass this exam. The first one being the actual white papers that come from AWS after you sign up for the certification. So if you go to AWS's certification website, and I can leave a link for it in the description below if you guys want, um, when you actually go to that website and you sign up for the test, it was around 100 US dollars. Immediately after that, they send you about 40 pages worth of white papers. Now I know what you're thinking, 40 pages is a lot of white paper, um, or a lot of white papers, a lot of things to read through, a lot of literature. But if you actually just kind of glance over that and look at the glossary, and that's kind of what I did, it just gives you a feel for the kind of uh, knowledge that you're gonna need in order to pass this certification. So you're gonna be looking at things like free tiered resources. You're gonna be looking at things like basic solutions with Amazon Light Sale and other proprietary solutions that you can make. You're also gonna to have to look at basic things like cost effectiveness for your solutions, right? So it's gonna be a lot of stuff geared toward not only billing and cost, but also support plans as well and kind of what each of those buckets of support plans gives you in terms of features. Now my methodology with these white papers was, I kind of just read them, or just kind of glossed through them that Sunday when I signed up for the test. So for context, I signed up on a Sunday to take the test, and then I took the test on a Wednesday. So I had about three days or so to kind of prepare. So that Sunday evening, I kind of just looked through all the white papers. I learned kind of a general overview of the things that I would need to know. And then I went into our second resource, which is going to be A Cloud Guru. So if you guys know about A Cloud Guru, I'm not affiliated by them in any way or any capacity, but they're a really, really great website if you're trying to look for certifications on things like AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, things like that. The membership can be a bit of expensive. I think it's around $45. Um, you get about seven days free if that's something you wanna look into before you actually buy it. But it's really, really great in, in the fact that it gives you pra practice exams before you actually have to take the uh, certification. So I would go to the end of the chapter, I would take the quiz for that specific chapter, and then anything I got wrong, I would just Google, right? So I got a lot of things wrong in terms of what's a free tiered resource and what's not. So what has like potentially let you use it for free and what doesn't. And you have to be really careful with this examination because it does have those SAT-like questions. And I know what you're saying, it's not like the SAT, okay? But what I'm saying is there could be two answers that are logically correct, but you have to pick the better one. Right? So if you're doing a cost-effective uh, solution and the, and the question is asking you what solution is most cost-effective, two of those questions could be, or two of those answers could be right, but you have to pick the one that's most cost-effective. So keep that in mind when you're going through this resource and keep that in mind when you're going through A-Cloud Guru to look for, or to, to watch out for certain things that you should be remembering. Now another resource that I used is one that's also gonna be free depending on how you use it. So you're actually gonna to go to the Amazon console, you're gonna sign up for an account. Right, so if you're gonna to go to the AWS cloud, just sign up for an account, you're gonna need a credit card, but that doesn't mean you actually have to put anything on that credit card, it's just for kind of billing purposes. So what I did was I basically went through A-Cloud Guru, I figured out what I didn't know, and then I recreated those solutions and those, those billing and support plans and, and things like that, I recreated all that within the actual AWS console. So this kind of helped me, I'm, I'm a visual learner, so I visualized exactly what I was gonna to have to do in the quiz or in the test. And for me, that always kind of helped me remember it. Also, it gives you a lot of good knowledge, uh, a lot of good practical knowledge, 
and it also help you help set you up for certifications like the AWS Certified Developer or Solutions Architect. So it definitely doesn't. It's definitely not a bad thing to just sign up for your own account and just start messing around with the solutions. Again, it's free. Just make sure you tear down your resources after you're done so you don't accrue any surprise billing costs. Trust me, those are a bitch. Now, the last resource I used was the Free Code Camps uh, video on the AWS Cloud Practitioner certification. And I, I'm not really sure of the author, but I'll be sure to link it not only to my right here, but also in the description below. And what I really liked about this video is it had a lot of good uh, footnotes that you could actually skip to specific parts of the video. So for me, I was kind of weak on CloudFormation, which is a bit of a shocker because I actually use CloudFormation on a daily basis. But in terms of like billing and solution costs, I was a bit weak on that. So what I would do is I would go to the footnote of the video. I would kind of click through. Once you get onto that video, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's really, really nicely parsed out. There's about a hundred different sections and it's like a three hour video. So if you're very weak in terms of uh, the content that's in the Cloud Practitioner exam, Definitely just go through the whole video, read the whole thing. It's really, really short and parsed out when you actually take it chunk by chunk. So definitely go in and, and take a look at that as, as my fourth and, and final resource. So of course, all this knowledge that I explained to you is completely useless in terms of practicality if you don't actually go in and do it yourself. So one thing I recommend is that you don't rush the exam like I did. I really just did it because I wanted to get a cloud solution or a, a cloud practitioner certification under my belt. But what I really would recommend is that you get that free account, like I said, you go in and you recreate these resources as if you're actually going to build them yourself for a company. That not only shows practical knowledge, but it's something you can speak about in interviews and really wow your employers. It's also gonna give you, it's also gonna let you remember things a lot easier, um, at least if you think the way I do. Now, if you go in, you create an entire solution, you're gonna be able to remember the steps of that solution, whether it's a CI CD pipeline, whether it's container shipping, things like that over just reading about something in Cloud Guru. Both kind of have their place in how you're gonna be able to pass these certifications, but make sure you actually go in and express the practicality of creating these solutions yourself. All right, I hope that video was informative. I hope it helps you get closer to taking your first or your second or your third, whatever it is, um, AWS Cloud Certification Exam. And my last piece of advice for you, if you're someone like me who procrastinates a little too much, is I would do the method that I kind of learned um, from a various amount of content creators. So what I did is as soon as I went in and actually scoped how long I thought the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam would take me, I immediately signed up for the test and put the money down. Now the reason I did that was because it no longer the ball was no longer in my court after I did that. So once I signed up for that test, it was either I show up to the exam fully prepared or I show up to the exam and make kind of a fool out of myself and waste $100 that I that, that, I, that was hard earned, you know? So I immediately signed up for the test. I knew it was in three days. I knew it's kind of up to me to cram for that test or be as prepared as I possibly could. And I'm doing the same method with the AWS Certified Developer certification that I just signed up for actually the day after I took the practitioner certification. Now that certification is actually gonna be proctored and I'm gonna take the exam on the 22nd of this month. So I'll let you guys know how that goes. But I really hope this method and, and these resources help you guys pass your first cloud practitioner certification or your first cloud certification in general. Everyone take care. Hope you have a great day.